Welcome to the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news in review. We're going to talk about a whole lot of stuff. San Diego Comic Con just happened. TFCon just happened. We're in the aftermath of all this great stuff. Now, if you want to know what happened at those events, check my recaps. Now, I'm going to talk about some stuff that's in there, but I'm going to talk about a whole lot more that was not because. Guess what? The rest of the world still revolved around. First thing we're going to talk about is this Culture Shock Megatron statue prototype. And it looks really good. I gotta say, it looks super G1 and spot on. And these kind of statues cost between $250 and $500. No price just yet. And I gotta say that I'm not a statue collector. This thing will not transform, this thing will not move, no articulation. I'm just gonna say, it looks great. And even if you were to put it on a masterpiece shelf, as your, you know, instead of MP36 or a KO MP36, it would fit the bill. Next thing I wanna talk about is a curveball. And Cyberverse has been off my radar, off my purchase list avoided like the plague until this year there are two figures I want I want this Alpha Trion and I want the Sharticon which is a KO oversize or just oversize version of the Hasbro Legend Sharticon but this guy here looks good and in my opinion is the absolute best looking Alpha Trion that you've ever seen made by Hasbro and it transforms so the next thing I want to talk about is a cell shaded oversized KO version of Grimlock for like 125 bucks, and it's going to be massive, bigger than all the other competitors, almost the exact same size as Giga Power, but cell shaded. And I got to tell you that cell shaded is starting to take on as the new biggest thing. That Hasbro is jumping on board with their Siege. And I pre-ordered this and their Megatron. I did not like the cab mode, but I like the Optus mode. But the cell shaded put me over the top, like, instantly. I could not wait to pre-order this. This thing turns into a tank, but it's cell shaded, and oh my gosh, it looks good. If they did the entire Siege in cell shaded, I'd buy it. But, hold on, because there's more Siege news to come that's bigger and better so in my stcc video i was talking about how i had big news literally big that did not relate to comic-con but related to the siege line and this is it black mamba is going to be making ko oversized figures of siege and i gotta say that color me impressed on this because the biggest problem I have with Siege, well, there's two. Price and size. Now, if they can meet the price or even a little cheaper and make them the right scale, I'd be happy. So, Shockwave is a leader class figure made as a Voyager class size. And if it's a leader class size, meaning 9 inches or 8.5 inches or whatever, I'd be down with that. And, you know, keep the price maybe 20 30 bucks who knows what they're going to charge then you got you got soundwave let's make him from voyager up to leader i'd be okay with that S the the star screen i love the tetra jets design but the tetra jets are a little bit bigger than just voyager take him up to leader class optimus prime the problem with optimus and megatron is now that i know there's a cell shaded i'm going to be waiting to get a KO oversized cell shaded of them, but I'm getting the official cell shaded because I think they're very limited. This whole line, if it was cell shaded, would have sold me from day one. And I think after Siege, that might be where they go. So next, I want to talk about these guys. And real quick, I already talked about it in Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, but you have the two pack of the the, the Garofi and the uh, Noizu, and you have a Frenzy. 
which we know blue is rumble. Uh, moving into this, this is on Hasbro Pulse for $35. And on, I think, Amazon or Walmart, whatever. Other places want $40. Hasbro Pulse, $35. Plus tax. Free shipping if you signed up for it in time. This is a Japanese release. And the two-pack itself sells for like $700 bucks if it's vintage. So get this and don't pay $700. Bucks, I guess. So I guess you can't talk about those tapes without talking about the Walmart reissue of Soundwave, which is a huge disappointment for the price. They want 50 bucks for Soundwave and it comes with everything that was there before, but if you look at the packaging, you don't get the styrofoam. And I've got two of these already. You know, they're not sealed and they're not great, but they have styrofoam. So I'm a little put off by the plastic. But then again, it lets you know that it's not truly vintage. It's just a touch of vintage to it. But the plastic shows you we're living in a modern age. Now, $50, you know, they weren't able to move the primes as well all over the country at $50. This might move a little bit. But yeah, it's more like $35, $30, And the cassettes, there is not the pricing leak on this yet. Now, I was thinking they'd be 15 bucks. The other, like, three-pack set is 35 making me think these are going to be 20 At 20 it's a bit of a stretch. 15 was my target. Sadly, if you did not get on Quietus, the FT-29T, which is the repaint of the first release, and it's a very, very, very slight repaint, and I'm estimating a 10% at the most difference between the two, and I will review them, it's sold out everywhere. I cannot find one place that has it in stock. And it's been, what, like nine days? But this guy was selling for almost $300. And I paid $130 for my first one. I paid the full $160 for the second one because that's just how things work. Anyway, let's move to the next thing. I'm seeing a multitude of places putting up the Acoustic Wave for pre-order. Now, that doesn't mean it's coming out now or soon or in the future. But I know it's on Show Z, TF Direct. Uh, I haven't checked TF Source yet, but those sites usually don't put it up unless they have some sort of forward guidance. And I have to think that if you're a third party distributor, you're kind of getting sick of the teases and trying to pre-sell this stuff with it not actually coming out. So I think there's some forward guidance coming from Fansoys that this will be out relatively soon. Relatively soon is like within a year. You also get Spend, Spendrift 2.0. Now, Spendrift 2.0, in my opinion, was a giant block of X-Transbots. And X-Transbots is coming out now. This is a predatory tactic. They're trying to block X-Transbots. And it's not going to stop me because I still think they're going to be the best. And they're going to be the next Springer. But the thing is, the way it's listed, it feels like it's coming this year. So we have the newest SDCC Comic-Con exclusive 80 bucks and you get this guy, but he's painted in black and he looks, I think that looks cool. I gotta say out of all of these G2 repaints, I really like it. Now let's talk down on our level, the lower level, the Legends level. There is an upcoming hot rod or, shall I say, a McFansoy's version of Rodimus. Now this is supposed to have the whole MP09 gimmick where it takes it from a hot rod to a Rodimus. Don't know how, but I love McFans toys and I, I think Magic Square is the best in the Legends and then McFans toys is the second best, but they do some shady practices. So it's kind of hard to defend that, but in the end, Yes, they are great. And if this, this is their own work. And it looks better than the Papa Toys. It looks better than whatever else is out there. Definitely looks better than Hasbro. Let's get real and let's get big. If you don't know about the HasLab Unicron, then I need to tell you about it. It is $575. It is a crowdfunding thing that you have like 40 days left. It's got 15 or 1600 backers of the 8,000 target 
and I have to tell you a whole lot of stuff about this, but I'm gonna tell you that in a separate video. The thing is, there's too much to talk about in like a one minute blurb. I need a 10, 15 minute talk, and I think there's gonna be more reveals about this. There always is. So I'm gonna have a few more videos talking about this, but I really don't want anyone to miss out that doesn't know about this. It's 27 inches. It's almost, it's gonna be over 600 bucks after tax. They eat the cost in shipping, which is probably the 75. And it's gonna be big, not as big as I predicted, not what I predicted, but I have to live in reality and I hope everybody else does too. So tentatively, Sola Chagokin reissue of the Lion Bot is coming in August. And then October, we get the first release of Sola Chagokin Bandai perfection version of Die Rugger. Oh, I don't really like that word. I like Vehicle Voltron. And I'm gonna put this next to my Miracle Metalworks near my uh, original and my KOs and all that great stuff. But I gotta tell you, the excitement just keeps growing. But, what's more exciting? Well, if you go to Show Z right now, for $210, you can get this uh, Lion Bot for, it's a, it's a KO, it's Fantasy Jewel, there are a handful of flaws and imperfections that I think were planned into it so they don't get hit too hard by Bandai. Or Bandai signed off on this because of the flaws. Both the heads of the red and green lion are exactly the same, just painted different. The uh, One of the lions, the screws are on the front instead of the back. There are several flaws that are engineered into this thing. So if you know, but guess what? I pre-ordered it and I'm gonna review this on my channel. And then I'm going to pull it back out when I get my official. So be ready for all that fun stuff. Now I like to talk about something interesting before I transition into the Star Wars realm of the world. And I gotta say, I found a life-size Trypticon. And this is huge. It's larger than the people involved in this. And it's awesome. I love this. And I gotta say, that's the scale of you got an MP Trypticon. So what's the scale of Unicron? What's the scale of Omega Supreme? Well, Omega Supreme would probably be around part of it. Anyway, thought it was really cool. Hope you guys get the same level of kick out of this as I did. Don't forget about all the new reveals that are gonna come in October. Uh, 25th, 27th at the DC TFCon, and that's where they reveal the leg of Trypticon. That's where they reveal the tank of the Omega Supreme that's coming up, and that's where they'll probably reveal a claw of Skopinok. So I want to say that the Star Wars news was very, very light at SDCC. It's not because of the fact that the new movies kind of are underwhelming, that the new characters are not interesting, and that the new characters don't sell at all. Wait, hold on. I heard we sold the third Ray figure and the second Rose Tico. That's news. Now, I gotta say that SDCC spent more time, effort, and money, and attention to their display. And... No time, attention, money, effort into what's actually going to be sold to the public. That's hilarious. But I want to say this display does look cool. It's exciting. It, it kind of really brings you into the whole world of Star Wars. And in the end, I still don't want to buy any of the stuff on the shelf that I don't already have. Aside from SDCC, there's this picture of... Luke Dagobah. Now I think this is a redo of Luke Dagobah because Luke Dagobah original had like a the the whole shirt like the the button down shirt. Now he's in the uh, sleeveless shirt and it's showing different colors. This is just kind of a goofy picture, but I think this is kind of the right route to go. 
photorealistic face paint, a different figure. I'm kind of sick of seeing the same exact figure coming out. I really think that if they already made the figure, the newest figure or iteration should be slightly different. And you know, like this, this makes sense. They, I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Do you think it makes sense to change the figure a little bit instead of giving us now our 43rd reissue of the exact same figure now they're giving us something different and i like different and i'm not gonna lie to you if i bought all these figures all along and then the same thing comes out it's kind of like oh, i'm kind of tired of doing this but if something it's different a little bit it keeps me wanting to go and that's simple psychology right so the next thing star wars i want to talk to you about is that Entertainment Earth is supposed to be getting... Okay, this is funny as heck. Entertainment Earth is supposed to be getting these figures, all right? I I might have gotten bad, faulty information, and I'm going to go with my inf information is bad, but they're asking 150 for a set of six. Now, I can't find it on their site, so I think it's false information, so I'm going to put it out there as rumor... It should be 60 bucks for the set, right? I mean, if I check my sources, that's right. But uh, that's the. It, it even had them tagged in it, but when I went to Entertainment Earth, I couldn't find it. So it should be 60 bucks for the set. If you're going to pay 150 just go on eBay and get it today. Don't wait till December or whenever it's coming out. But anyway, it's coming to Entertainment Earth soon. And I'm sorry, that's all the Star Wars news I could find that was different than what was the last six weeks in a row. So if you have new Star Wars news, please post it down below for me. Personally, as a Star Wars collector of 23 years, I want to know because Star Wars seems to be dying so quickly on the vine. But Transformer collectors can get this at the SDCC. It's 70 bucks for an SDCC exclusive on Hasbro Pulse, Amazon, like three or four different places. But... It has new parts and different color of figures, and I'm going to put up a, a, a review of this thing. It is awesome, but it is turned into the most versatile figure that you can make anything in your mind out of these three guys. Anyway, let me know what you think about this week's news and review. Uh, is there anything I missed that you think is awesome? Like, subscribe, turn your name, hang around.